Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Don't you love it when an argument you've been trying to make just comes to life? I've been saying forever that Democrat policy, Democrat ideals, what guides their viewpoints, their talking points, their ethos within the world of politics, is guided by a heightened level of naivete. You know, only a naive Democrat can think that communism will work. Only a Democrat can think that regulating guns will stop criminality. Only AOC can think that building less prisons will reduce crime. Only Black Lives Matter supporters can believe that defunding the police will turn dysfunctional communities into beautiful green grass, white picket fence, calm suburbs. And only the Joe Biden administration can think that the Taliban, who just took over Afghanistan, will create an inclusive and representative government. You cannot write this stuff up, folks. The Babylon Bee could not write this story even if they tried. But it's not even parody. It's literally a talking point coming out of the Biden administration, and it is beyond laughable. It's not laughable. It's not even funny. It's just sad. These are the people who are running the United States of America. These are the people who are representing the most powerful country on the world stage on the same plane with powerful adversaries like China and Russia. It's unbelievable. But you better start start believing it, because I'm going to show you it really exists. But before we get into any of it, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share the video as much as possible. We're still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm, hidden from non-subscribed viewers. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. All right, guys, so the only reason Afghanistan is in the position that it currently is, is due to the naivete of the Biden administration. They thought the Afghan forces were loyal to them. They thought the Afghan forces were going to fight a battle that they have never fought for decades a battle that dysfunctional Middle Eastern countries never fight. A fight for democracy. It was completely naive to think that there would be any outcome other than what happened. It might be 2020 hindsight, but the fact that the Biden administration was caught flat-footed was due to their level of naivete. And speaking of level of naivete, that was one level. This is another. The State Department calls on the Taliban to form an inclusive and representative government. This is not a Babylon Bee skit. It's a real thing. Thing that just happened. Additionally, the UN Security Council issued a joint press statement earlier today calling for a new government that is united, inclusive, and representative, including with the full and full and meaningful participation of women. The council spoke with one voice to underscore that Afghanistan must abide by its international obligations, including to international humanitarian law, and ensure the safety and security of all Afghans and international citizens. I have never seen anything this incompetent in my entire life. The Taliban, who fight with deadly force to instill a repressive regime and have been repressing women for decades. After Joe Biden handed them a massive W on a silver platter, the Biden administration then gets on all fours, not on their knees, on all fours, asking them to build an inclusive government? What's next? The Biden administration is going to ask them to form an HR department? Pushing critical race theory and teaching people not to be white? I've never seen anything so, frankly, stupid in my entire life. It's a level of incompetence and ignorance so beyond measure that it's dangerous. We're talking about a regime that subjugates women as bounties of war, that has a belief system that wedding children, young girls, is permissible. But people are supposed to fall for this joke? The Biden administration uses liberal buzzwords like diversity and inclusion, and all of a sudden, Twitter lefties are optimistic about the future of Afghanistan under Taliban rain? It's complete craziness. Then Twitter pushes this headline, World News Live. Taliban say they will guarantee women's rights under the limits of Islam following takeover of Afghanistan. I have already mentioned that women will be allowed to work according to the principles of Islam. Women are very respectable to us. We respect them and they will be allowed to work according to the principles of Islam. And uh, we are guaranteeing all their rights within the limits of Islam. Within the limits of Islam, you say? I think there's another way to say that. In fact, they said it themselves. Our people accept, our women are Muslims, they, they accept Islamic rules. If they uh, continue to live according to Sharia, we will be happy, they will be happy. 
So essentially what they're saying is that they will ensure the rights of women based on Sharia doctrine, which is essentially no women's rights. Sharia law for women. You will stay inside your homes at all time. It is not proper for women to wander aimlessly about the streets. If you go outside, you must be accompanied by a maram, a male relative. If you are caught alone on the streets, you will be beaten and sent home. You will not under any circumstance show your face. You will cover with a burqa when outside. If you do not, you will be severely beaten. Cosmetics are forbidden. Jewelry is forbidden. You will not wear charming clothes. You will not speak unless spoken to. You will not make eye contact with men. You will not laugh in public. If you do, you will be beaten. You will not paint your nails. If you do, you will lose a finger. Girls are forbidden from attending school. All schools for girls will be closed immediately. Women are forbidden from working. If you are found guilty of adultery, you will be stoned to death. Listen, listen well, obey, Allah Akbar. You know, we're dealing with some real feminist icons here. And actually, speaking of feminist icons, prominent feminist groups mysteriously silent while Taliban targets women in Afghanistan. Prominent feminist groups in the US have been silent regarding the ongoing disaster in Afghanistan, particularly in relation to the horrors Afghan women and girls will face under Taliban rule. For example, the National Organization for Women, NOW, has said nothing about the situation in Afghanistan, tweeting only about voting rights and abortion over the past week. The organization's president, Christian Nunes, has only retweeted comments about equal rights amendments while saying nothing about Afghan women and girls. Of course, they're too connected to the Democrat Party to admit reality. Of course, Democrats don't want to live in reality because the mere concept of reality absolutely demolishes, dismantles their entire platform, their entire worldview. But let's keep getting into the blunders. Once again, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan stands by the decision to leave behind U.S. military equipment in botched withdrawal. Billions of dollars of military equipment just handed over to the Taliban, and the current Biden administration stands by that decision. Why give the Taliban access to state-of-art equipment that they could either use to bolster their own defenses or to sell off to other countries? This is, a, I think, a, a very good example of the difficult choices a president faces and a secretary of defense and a secretary of state and a national security advisor face in the context of the end of a 20-year war. At the end of the day, what the president has focused on all the way through here is trying to take the information that's been presented to him, the risks, costs, and benefits, and make decisions that were in the best national security interests of the American people. It was just a difficult decision that the Biden administration and their national security advisors had to make to hand over state-of-the-art equipment to the Taliban. No, the reality of the situation is they had no plan and are now trying to pretend as if it was all according to plan. I will not sit here and have them laugh in my face, make a mockery of my intelligence as they skirt around the truth and operate in alternate realities. We're calling on the Taliban to create an inclusive government and to respect women's rights. It was all part of the plan to leave billions of dollars of military equipment for the Taliban. I'm losing IQ points just listening to this stuff. And you know, it's nothing new. It's the same thing with Joe. His gaffes aren't one-offs. They happen over and over again. It's not just a one-off foreign policy disaster. It's his entire career of foreign policy disaster. It's not just one example of complete naivete. It's endless examples of naivete. I mean, just the other week after Joe Biden canceled the Keystone XL pipeline, he begged OPEC nations to produce more oils to combat the gas crisis as they're making billions upon billions, maybe trillions of dollars with sky high oil prices controlling the market, controlling supply, with the US becoming increasingly dependent on them. He asked OPEC nations to produce more oil and reduce the price of gas, naively thinking they'd say what? Oh yes, Mr. Biden? Right away, sir. OPEC delivers another embarrassment for Joe Biden. It's a rough week for President Biden, who, despite a brief appearance at the White House, in which he blamed others for his colossal mismanagement of our country's withdrawal from Afghanistan, has remained secluded at Camp David, and the hits just keep coming. In a stinging rejection issued Monday, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, denied Biden's request for more oil, saying that its member countries and its allies, including Russia, conveniently think markets do not need more oil than they plan to release in the coming months, despite U.S. pressure to add supplies to check on oil prices 
rise. It's a level of incompetence and naivete which hasn't been seen probably since the Jimmy Carter era. And even then, Joe Biden makes Jimmy Carter seem like a wise sage and a foreign policy hawk. The US has never looked so weak. OPEC, Russia, and of course China, the Taliban terrorist organizations, the cartel are taking advantage. Just then, China urges the US to stop official contacts, arms sales to, and military ties with Taiwan. Insider Paper reports, just in, if there are US troops present on Taiwan Island, China will crush them by force, said the Chinese media. Joe is a complete laughingstock on the world stage, and suburbanite independent voters, frankly, are to blame. You bought into the orange man bad narrative. You voted for this incompetent administration, and frankly, you get what you pay for. You bought Chinese goods. You got Chinese quality. And that's what you get with China Joe. That's what I got for you, though. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I gotta get back to work, though. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.